let's look at a real world application of primary and secondary and try to get some of this concepts into a little higher level now involving primary and secondary and what happens in a loop. I've got two 500 ton chillers here. Let's make them 12 degrees delta T on the chill water side. I like 12 degrees because it's two GPM per ton. So this system could make with the first chiller 1,000 GPM, second chiller on the line 2,000 GPM. Designed as it's a 644 constant flow to chillers one and chiller two. Look at my green common pipe, primary, secondary. I've got a secondary pump that's verbal flow, two way valves on the coils, and that flow is going to vary. Let's see what happens as I vary the flow on the secondary loop in staging chillers and what happens. Remember to load this chiller up. Design is 44 supply, 56 degree return water, 12 degree delta T. So let's just take a look. There's three possibilities of what's going to happen with these chillers in the primary and secondary. Go back to your basics. Remember, if the primary flow rate equals to the secondary flow, primary flow rate could be greater than the secondary flow, or the primary flow could be less than the secondary flow. What will happen to these temperatures as we do that? I think it's important you put all this information together basically that you've learned, and let's see what happens to the temperatures as we play with this. So let's take each one of these cases, put some numbers to it, put some temperatures to it, and let's just see where we are. I think you'll enjoy doing this. So here we go. Primary flow rate equal to the secondary. I got chiller one on, chiller two off. I got a thousand GPM coming out on the chiller. That's at 44 degree water. If I take a thousand GPM out to my secondary circuit, what? No flow in the common pipe. It's zero. Assume I got good coils out there. I take 44 out of a thousand GPM. I'm going to bring a thousand GPM back at 56 degrees. Great. I got a thousand GPM at 56 degrees water coming back to the second T. No flow in the common pipe. So my first chiller sees a return water temperature of what? 56 degrees. So chiller one is fully loaded. 12 degree delta T, producing 500 tons, return to stitch of six supplies 44, a perfect world, fantastic world. The primary flow rate is exactly equal to the secondary flow rate, and there's no flow in the common. You won't see that very often, but that's a possibility you need to understand. So let's just keep going with this concept, and let's go with the primary flow rate greater than the secondary. I've got two chillers online now, chiller one, chiller two. So I'm producing 2,000 GPM of 44 degree water. Both chillers running, 2, G, two, two GPM per ton, 1,000 tons there, I can produce, and I am producing, 2,000 GPM of 44 degree water. Now, how much water are we going to take out in the secondary loop? Well, let's take out 1,500 GPM. So now we're getting more to a real world situation. I've taken 1,500 out. What does that mean to my common pipe? Yeah, now you see how, how much fun this can be. So now we've got, going south, 500 GPM in the common pipe of 44 degree water. Great. So you see how the T's have to sum up? So I take my 1,500 GPM of 44 degree water out to my system, and I bring it back, 1,500 GPM at 56 degrees, and it's going to do what at the T? I'm going to have 1,500 GPM of chill water for return at 56 degrees, mixing with... 500 GPM of 44 degree water to give me 2,000 GPM of 53 degree water returning. Now you see what you've learned. You see how important this is to get all this together. So each chiller now has 53 degree return water, 44 supply, two chillers running. Everybody's still happy. Everybody's working fine. And this is a mode that chillers running all the time with primary and secondary. So each chiller is 75% loaded. There's a 9 degree delta T, 53 to return, 44 supply, 9 degree delta T, and the design was 12. So I'm 9, 12, so each chiller is 3 fourths loaded. Typical, typical operating condition in the system. How about if our primary flow rate is less than the secondary flow rate? Let's just take a look. What am I going to do here now? I've got one chiller running, 1,000 GPM, 44 degrees. Chiller number two is off. What happens, or can I take out 1,200 GPM? Wow, interesting, huh? You're telling me I'm going to take out more water than I'm putting to the T? Yeah. Now, what does that mean to you? What have you learned? What's happening in the common pipe? That means I got 200 GPM going north, bottom to the top of the screen on the common pipe. And what kind of water is that going to be? 
let's just see, let's put all the numbers. I think you understand it's going to have to be hot return work. We might have a problem here. Let's just see what happens. Suppose I take the 1200 GP amount, it's going to be 46. And I bring back 1200 GP into 56. I'm seeing a 10 degree delta T. But here's what gets to be interesting. I'm bringing 1200 GPM back at 56. But where is the 200 GPM coming from going south to north to mix with the 1000 GPM of 44? It has to be 200 GPM of 56 degree water. So I've got 1200 GPM going to the bottom T at 56. I got 1000 GPM at 56 going over to my first chiller. That leaves 200 GPM going north of hot. 56 degree water mixing with 1,000 to 44 to give me 1,200 GP in the 46 degree water. That may not be desirable. Your cooling cores may not work. You may have a problem here. How would you solve the problem? One thing you could do is stage on the chiller number two. Chiller number two is off right now. We could turn it on. What would happen to this exact setup if I turn on the second chiller? So if you recognize the numbers up here real quick, so I don't want to bore you with some of this. I've increased my two to 2,000 GP and 44 degrees to the first T. I'm still taking out 1,200, but now I've got 2,000 going to the T, so now I've got going north to south, 800 GPM, a 44 degree water. I'm bringing my 1,200 back at 56, so I'm mixing, and I wind up with each chiller seeing 51 degree return water. In other words, I've got 1,000 GPM of 44 degree water going out, I bring it back to the chillers at 51. So each chiller is in a delta T of what would that be? Seven degrees. I've got two chillers running now. Everybody's happy. I'm keeping 44 degree water to my chill water course. Everything is fine. And the good news is, the good news is I got that 56 hot return water coming back. Now I want to play with that 56 degree return water a little bit so you can understand this term low delta T syndrome. I want you to kind of have a feeling for that. So we go back to this. Form. And I said 2 GPM per ton is 12 degrees. Now, if I look at my chillers and I put my, my GPM in a ton being 12,000 BTUs, and if I had a 500 ton chiller at 12 degree delta T, my flow rate is 1,000 GPM. So I like looking at this because 12 degree delta T on chill water is a good design. Nothing wrong with it. It's 2 GPM per ton. It's a great design. And it makes the numbers simple for what we're doing. But all we're going to do is take that formula and change the delta T. Are we going to change the flow rate? What happens to the delta T? That's the thing I want to ask you. So let's take a look at this. Here's my 500 ton chuck. You designed it for 1,000 GPM at 56 degree return and 44 supply. And as you can see with the BTU formula, 12,000 BTUs per ton, that is a 500 ton chuck. I want everybody listening to me, and just sometimes I sound a little crazy when I say things, but get this in your head. This is work you listening to. You cannot load anybody's chiller up unless you get the return chill water temperature up. If you don't give a chiller the design return water temperature, you can't get the tonnage out of it. It's impossible. So right now, I've got this 6 degree water going to my chiller. I'm producing 44. I've got 500 tons. What happens if you don't give me hot 56 degree return water back? What would happen? Right now, the chiller is fully loaded. What would happen if you reduced my chill water return temperature to 54 degrees? Ah, I just did it for you. Do the math. What happens? What, where do I wind up if I do that? I wind up with a 10 degree delta T versus 12. I still got 1,000 GPM. My chill is going to give you 417 tons, not 500. Now, you bought a 500 ton chiller, and make sure you get this simple statement. This is very important. I'm repeating myself. You have to get the return chill water up to design to get max delta, to get max tonnage. In other words, if you produce in 44 degree water on this 500 ton chiller, and you never give me water back any hotter than 54 at 1,000 GPM, you're never going to get more than 417 tons out of the chiller. It's impossible. You cannot get any more. You're hot. So what are you going to do? Chiller is only 83% loaded now. You bought a 500 ton chiller, and you can't get 500 tons out of it. This is, this is the part you need to get, get straight. Uh, if the chill set point is fixed at 44, you can't do it. What are we going to do? This is called low system delta T. We've got that 500 ton load out there. We're producing 2,000 GPM at 44 degree water. I'm taking 1,200 GPM out. 
I've got 800 GB on the common pipe, same numbers as before, but look what I've changed. And instead of coming back at 56, I'm coming back at 54. I have low delta T syndrome. Same setup before. I've got two chillers running, 2,000 GPN, 44 degree wind being produced. I'm going out at 1,200 GPN at 44 degrees. I'm coming back 1,200 GPN at 54, not 56. We cannot meet the 500 ton load with one chiller. Slow down and take a look. Do the BTUs in your mind. I know we're in a hurry as always, but load is 500 tons. I'm having to run 1,000 tons worth of chillers. I'm having to run two. 500 ton chillers to give you 500 tons because you have low delta T syndrome. The sign was 12 degree delta T on the low side, but you're going out at 44, coming back at 54, I only got 10 degrees. So now we got a problem. We have to run both chillers to give you 500 tons. Bottom line is, what's going to happen if you get a total 1,000 ton load? You can't get the BTUs out. So now you've got 50 degree return water to each chiller, and each chiller is going to give you 50%. Look at the wasted energy because of this low system delta T. Nothing to do with primary and secondary. This is because you're not giving me 56 degree water back. You're giving me 54. What does that do to you? Look at all the wasted energy going on this thing. We've got to run two chillers to make 500 tons. So we double pump in the primary side. On the secondary side, instead of pumping 1,000 GPN, we're, we're pumping 1,200. Friction goes up. I got more pressure drop. I'm having to run two chillers, two sets of pumps, two sets of cooling tower pumps, and two cooling towers. So energy-wise, low delta T, I'm not getting the 56 back. and only giving me 54. You're paying a huge penalty in the operating cost, a penalty that everybody has been published, you see all the magazines, and everybody says, this is this is the issue, what are we going to do about it? So our chill plant cannot give you a 1,000 tons at low delta T. Remember that. If I only got 417 out of it, if I double that, I can only get about 8, what is it, about 835 out of it. In other words, I'll never get a 1,000 tons out of this 1,000-ton chill plant until you give me a hot return order, until you give me my 56. If you're going to insist on giving me 50, oh, I cannot give you a thousand tons. That's what you got to kind of understand. So let's take a little bit of a look at this. How can we fix the problem? First thing to do is fix that low delta T problem out the system. If you can fix it, get the 56 degrees back up, you're going to win. You're going to save energy. You're not planting chill oil capacity. You're going to be able to get a thousand tons. But get this straight. It's not a primary or secondary problem. It is a system problem. It's out in the system. So the easy thing is to get that 56 degree water up and fix your problem. If not, you're going to have to buy another chart. That seems a little crazy to me, but we see this every day. Yeah, we see this Delta T syndrome every day. And we see people fixing it by buying a third chiller because they don't get the return chill water temperatures up. I cannot repeat that enough. Get that idea in your mind. When you look at systems, think in terms, what should the return chill water temperature be? You've got verbal flow and two-way valves. It should be at design or higher. So where are we going with all this? When you look at primary and secondary systems, you need to understand the impact of varying the flow of two-way valves. You need to understand the impact of not having a design return to your temperature. Here's a typical campus system that we're going back to the slide we had earlier, remember? Primary and secondary at the chillers, primary and secondary at the dorms, primary and secondary at the gyms. You see how this primary and secondary concept fits all over the place. As we work our way through this, you kind of get the idea of a campus system, a central chill water system. You're going to be using block loads. You're going to be using verbal flow in the distribution. The chillers themselves may or may not have verbal flow. This depends on how you want to design it. But tonnage-wise, you're going to say the dorm, the kids won't be in the dorms at the same time doing the gym and the basketball. They certainly won't be in the library at the same time in the dorms. So a big system, and all systems are like this. On big systems, what you want to do is have two-way valves and the ability to move the chiller around to where you need it. So you can move the tonnage from the chill water plant where you need it. So in this case, if you told up the total peak loads, trying to make an example here, you see you got a thousand ton each each block. So your total peak load is four thousand tons. But if you run a block load, knowing the kids can only be at one place at one time, then the definition of diversity is would be the block load is three thousand tons, individual peak loads are four thousand. 
but the kids can only be one place at one time, so the definition of diversity is 0.75. So my message to you is if we design this thing properly, we can buy 3,000 tons worth of chillers from a chiller plant. If you don't design it properly, you're going to need 4,000 tons or higher. If you got chill water delta two syndrome, delta T syndrome, you can't move it around properly. You've got to have that delta T to make it work. Primary, secondary gives you building blocks to work with. This is why it has become so important. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun. We appreciate your time. Have a great day. Thank you very much for your time.